my goodness, we have music. <laughs> Heads up for the community. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's 5 o'clock. I'm going to call our meeting to order. Um, I see everyone is here, but Trey, I expect he'll join us in just a, a few seconds. Um, if you are uh, in the chambers, if you would uh, uh, please recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you. Um, Todd, I saw you in the chambers. Can you just uh, tell us who else is present? Yes, I yes I, I will, uh, Chair. Uh, so I, we have Vicki, uh, Eric, um, Eric from IT, Chad Palachek, Lori Serkey from Finance, Carrie Ahrens, Meredith, and Scott at the, at the helm. All right, very good. And it looks like we are welcoming online Carol Worth and uh, Mary Fadash has also joined us. Um, so with all of that, uh, I would ask for a motion to approve the minutes of our January 25th meeting. Move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Has there been a motion and second? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. And Trey, I note that you've joined us. Uh, good to see, well, good to at least see your TM on the screen. So, um, we have a full agenda today, so let's get going. Um, uh, 3.1 is a recommendation that the city use, or uh, continues to use Corals and Brady as bond counsel. Chuck, is that yours? Yes, and actually you can take 3.7 with it. They go together. Okay. And that's the resolution authorizing uh, contracting with Wisconsin Health Finance Professionals. Um, so both of these uh, kind of go together. Quarles and Brady is our bond council, Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals for our financial advisory services. Um, with regard to Quarles and Brady, we actually did go through an RFP process this time around we'll, we'll likely do that uh, for um, our financial advisory services at some point in the next couple of years. Uh, we didn't feel that it was necessary to do that this year. Uh, with regard to bond council, um, uh, a couple of things to note. Uh, we did have a number of interviews. Uh, we interviewed, I think, seven different uh, potential uh, uh, bond council uh, and uh, in the, in, in the end, we, just, we are recommending that we continue with uh, Quarles and Brady. Uh, we, they uh, interviewed, I, I think their interview, uh, it's fair to say, was, was the best of, of the group. Um, they, their cost is uh, reasonable, uh, and uh, they work well uh, with us and with our, uh, our uh, financial advisor. Uh, and so given that, uh, we're recommending approving both of uh, these uh, uh, recommendations. Well, uh, Chuck, I think I'll take them one at a time. Um, so uh, is there a motion to uh, approve uh, the contract with uh, Quarles and Brady for bond counsel? Is that just for one year, Chuck? Yeah, it, it's it's ongoing. We'll, we'll likely do another one, you know, four or five years down the line again. It's, okay, it's, is there such a motion? Uh, so I'll move, Boren. Second. All right. Um, I will note that we had, Bert, I'll get to you just a sec. Um, I will note that we had a very extensive presentation on this by uh, Thomas Cameron, uh, who went into uh, substantial detail on the uh, request uh, for proposals. I believe uh, eight law firms responded, Chuck. I'm trying Seven. to remember. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was a substantial number, and each was interviewed. And because um, it's been my position all along that you know we need to have put these out for bid every once in a while. Um, so um, this comes to us then as a result of that. Uh, Bert, I, my question is: um, is is it written somewhere that every five years we must do that, 
it, you know, it's three to five years. Three years isn't a whole lot, but four to five years, or it's just done when people think it should be done. Yeah, we don't have a particular policy on it. Uh, this time around, it probably went a little longer than it needed to. Um, uh, although it was, there were a couple of issues that came up that caused us to sort of think through that. Um, I, I, my my feeling is, and, and thus far, the committee has seemed to to sort of be in agreement that you know every five years or so seems to be appropriate. But if there are significant changes in you know what uh, the work kind of work we're doing, or you know what's going on out in the, the rest of the world, uh, you know we we could look at that. I don't know. Uh, you know, more often or less often as, as needed. Okay. Um, my position is that it, that we really do need to do due diligence periodically, um, mm -hmm. and as long as it's periodic, I I think that's important. Um, and Todd, um, I would suggest that um, on the city administrator's calendar, five years out, there should clearly be a tickler to just review. Um, you know, performance uh, costs, um, other providers, and that kind of thing, if that's your wish. Um, we could formalize it, but that will be for another day. So, all right. Um, Chuck, I am going to do this as two separate motions, um, if you don't mind. So, we have a motion before us to um, approve the Quarles and Brady Bond Council contract. Is there any further discussion or any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, and it passes. Um, in the spirit, however, of talking about these things, let's just shoot down to 3.7, which is a resolution authorizing a contract with Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals uh, to be our um, financial advisory uh, services in 2021. Chuck, again, I expect that's yours. Yeah, and we reviewed that. I had Attorney Cameron uh, w uh, walk through most of that, and uh, the, the the contract is acceptable as as it is. Uh, and we're, uh, you know, we we are recommending that that you uh, do approve the resolution. Uh, sort of similarly to how you know we, every so often we kind of review these things. Our thought is to to perhaps uh, review this one maybe a couple of years down the road. Um, uh, we didn't feel the need to do that at this point. Again, I would suggest to our city administrator that that gets on a tickler system somewhere so that uh, it can be done on a, on a uh, somewhat on an as needed basis, but not totally forgotten about, if that makes sense. All right, can we have a motion? Oh, Bert, go ahead. I have a question. Is, is the is is the advisor attached to Quarles and Brady, or is the advisor independent of Quarles and Brady? No, th this this is independent. Uh, although, as we um, interviewed our bond council, uh, we were interested in you know trying to determine how well they worked with our current advisor, and in a few years, we probably. You know, if, if if there are multiple people applying for that position, we ask the same thing as how do they work with our, our bond council. So they're tied, but they're not automatically tied. Um, either one could, could work with any number. Okay, great, thank you. All right, um, I think we need a motion, correct? Yes. Yes, um, if I could have a motion then to approve the 2021 contract. Move to approve. And a second? Second. Any other questions, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> aye. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to 3.2, which is a resolution providing for the sale of approximately 5.14 million in general obligation promissory notes. I see Carol Worth is with us, um, and uh, I think Carol will just turn it over to you. Or does anybody want to say anything preliminarily? Okay, take it away, Carol. 
Thank you very much. And thank you very much for approving the contract. Uh, okay, I distributed a report regarding the 21 capital improvements borrowing. And this explains the process that we start with setting uh, the sale date. Uh, and this resolution is basically saying that we're intending to borrow $5,140,000 for capital improvement projects that will be for the city purposes as well as for two to districts. And all of the projects are eligible for tax exempt financing so we can put them all together in one issue. So the market preparation involved reviewing the list of projects, determining that they are eligible under uh, federal law for tax exempt financing, also certain state statutes. We are using promissory notes, which means we are restricted to a 10-year amortization. Uh, the promissory note statute also allows the city to commingle funds between the different uh, projects based on their actual cost. And in market preparations, we also have uh, the official statement, which is a prospectus on the city that's necessary for distributing into the marketplace to solicit bids from underwriters. We also use that in the application for the bond rating process, which we uh, will be doing also in the month of March. Um, the city did go through the bond rating process uh, multiple times in 2020 and as late as October, at which time Moody's did confirm the AA2 rating. And we don't anticipate at this point in time um, any change to that. On um, my second page, talk a little bit about the purpose of the uh, 5140 to Obviously, the, the majority of it, 4255 for the city CIP project, primarily supported by tax levy. And we have two small portions, 175 for TIP 17 and, and 710,000 for TIP 20. And we structure them with the anticipation that they will be able to be supported by, by increment and not tax levy. Um, we need to spend all of the funds within 24 months under IRS rules. And you'll see that uh, right now, under current market conditions, uh, we have structured the issue with uh, the true interest rate coming in at about a 0.92%. And we did take bids this morning on a uh, very comparable rated Wisconsin issuer, and those rates are good. So, uh, so we're in a very favorable market. And so I can tell you that as early as 11 o'clock this morning. So um, we have a pricing schedule that, uh, again, the focus on a pricing schedule that determines market is the yield column. So that shows you the um, yield in the first year of 2022 is a 0.20. And the highest yield in, in the last year, 2030, is a 0.85%. So that's the market. So as those numbers go up or down, we'll affect our results. So the um, couponing is just a factor of how they're priced. Anything over at 100 is premium. Premium can only be used by the underwriter to pay expenses. If it comes back to the city, it must go into debt service. Okay, so uh, that's a pretty good representation of how uh, the bonds would be priced based on this morning. You'll see all of the coupons are 1%, and then, of course, I just said that the true interest rate is 0.92. Well, what brings that down is the fact that there is some additional premium uh, that would be coming back to the city under this scenario, and that premium is what brings that rate down to the 0.92. Uh, market has even improved from last year at this time when we were doing the CIP borrowing. That rate was at a 1.57% on that borrowing and so you can see how much lower rates are at this time uh, some of that is also driven by the lack of supply in the market right now uh, so obviously there's a lot of interest in municipals there's a bigger demand than there is supply and that's what drives those yields down uh, even from last year at this time so the next page is just the individual amortization. We sell the issue as one issue, and then we track them individually by amortization by purpose. So uh, page number three shows the purposes for um, cities and the two kids. And then the following page is a little bit about market. And again, I kind of jumped ahead of myself there, uh, talking a little bit about that. Um, but. Uh, kind of give you an idea of, um, of where the market is at, even 
over the last two years. The last page of my report is a tracking of the yield that just really goes back about two years. And it tracks both the 10 year and the 20 year. And these are uh, AAA rated municipalities, which uh, City of Sheboygan is just, just a hair underneath that. So um, you can see that uh, the blue line is uh, tracking at a, at a 0 .70 and, uh, and the 20 year line. Uh, or the orange line is the 20 year yield, which is uh, the 1.22. So, you know, just looking at that, uh, you'll see those spikes that occurred in 2020. We were talking about that when we were we were issuing the 2020 CIP, and that's when uh, the market fell off. So you can see what a kind of what a panic we went into at that time. Um, and interest rates jumped like two percent within a couple of weeks. So uh, uh, that's when we had a lack of buyers. We had more supply than buyers, and now we have the reverse situation. We have a uh, lack of supply and uh, buyers just waiting for us to come into the market. So the uh, timeline calls for uh, the market preparations to occur till uh, we come back to the council with an award resolution, which is, will contain the results of the bid, and that's expected to occur on March 15th. And then on April 1, all funds will be wired to the city. So I know I ran through that very quickly, but I um, wanted to kind of hit the highlights and see if there were any specific questions. Questions for Carol? I have one, Madam Chair. Carol, uh, just out of curiosity, how many bidders did you have on that one this morning? I did. Thank you. So Carol, it would seem to me that at this rate, uh, refinancing would be unlikely in the future? Uh, on this particular issue, refinancing will be unlikely in the future. Now, this issue will have a call feature on it. Uh, the last two principal amounts will be callable the year before, so that will be in 2028. Call features are used for generating interest savings as well as giving you uh, another look at your debt service structure. And you may say, well, you know, We've been using notes, which is a very quick amortization, and the more that the city keeps issuing in terms of debt, the more difficult it gets to be to uh, maintain that 10-year amortization. So you may be taking a look at it and saying, well, uh, maybe we want to, at that point in time, maybe it would be beneficial based on all the other debt you have outstanding to maybe take it out for another one or two years or something that better structures according to your plans at that time in the future. So, so it, it would have, that's what you use your call features for is to address those um, second opportunities when you know what's happening eight years from now. All right, other questions? The one thing I, is speaking on that um, subject of refinancing, uh, We've had, I've had some communications with the city uh, this, this morning that uh, we have been looking at since 2019 uh, how the city's total general obligation debt service that's supported by tax levy, uh, where, how high it might go as we consider future capital improvement programs. And uh, so back in 2019, we developed a plan of uh, possibly refinancing some of your outstanding issues taken out in 15, 16, and 17 uh, to kind of flatten out that uh, those some of those high points that we might reach at a time when interest rates would be extremely attractive. Um, the original plan in 2019 was to wait until those call dates and kind of blend those into your CIP borrowing. And uh, further discussions about this CIP we just ran some some numbers, and uh, because these are really historical low rates, as you as you can see, and uh, it may be beneficial to proceed with uh, doing some of those refinancings. It would be called advanced refunding, which is a little bit more complicated, but it's still um, a type of refinancing that the government uh, provides for. Uh, and uh, I may be coming back to you at your next meeting about some of that information. All right. So I think what we are looking for is a motion. Excuse me. God bless. Bless, bless you. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
A motion to uh, authorize the sale of approximately $5,140,000 general obligation promissory note. Uh, so moved, Boren. Second. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Thank you all very much. All right, 3.3 uh, is uh, summons and complaint in the matter of uh, Mr. Ms. Short uh, versus the Sheboygan Police Department. Chuck? Yeah, so this uh, came to you uh, because it came in as a small claim summons and complaint, and we always send these to you just so you know what's happening. Uh, however, this was quickly dismissed. We filed a motion to dismiss, and the court has dismissed it. So you're both receiving notice that it happened and receiving notice that it's been dismissed at the same time and the matter may be filed. All right. Um, if there are no questions, uh, a motion to file would be in order. So moved. Second. And there's a, and there's a second. Um, Chuck, can I ask, it was just dismissed, not timely filed, the notice of claim or? Well, uh, it ended up, we had multiple in our motion to dismiss the, the court chose one, which was failure to state a claim upon which relief may be granted, but okay. there could have been any number of reasons. All right. Very good. So we have a motion second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. Let's go on to 3.4, which is a summons and complaint. Uh, Boss B, the city plan commission. Chuck? So this one is here just so that you're aware of it. Uh, this is a, a lawsuit against the uh, uh, city through its uh, plan commission related to the granting of a conditional use permit. Uh, we'll be, um, our, our office is handling the matter for now. Uh, staff has determined that uh, after responsive pleadings are uh, complete, we'll take a look at that. Uh, again, whether we need to go to outside, but at this point the issues are pretty narrow. Uh, in the initial um, in the initial complaint, and uh, we're hoping that the matter will also not be long for the courts. So, well, it's an interesting cause of action. Yeah. I think there may be some standing issues, but nonetheless. Um, uh, and my question is, if we go to outside counsel, will the Kohler company under our development agreement reimburse us for costs? Not under the development agreement, but they have uh, entered into a separate agreement. Uh, they actually, it was just with the mayor, um, and uh, and we will, if we choose to go outside, we will memorialize that with a more formalized uh, agreement. But yes, they have indicated they they will be standing by the agreement they made uh, with the mayor via an email. Okay, I think that might be appropriate to share with the committee. Yes, if, if we get to that point, we will do that. All right. So is this motion just pending, or I don't think it's suitable for filing, or is it? It's, it's just a matter to hold, but uh, uh, because it's ongoing uh, litigation, I wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to talk about it if you wanted. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about the matter? I have a question. What kind of timeline are we looking at? Weeks, days, months? Well, it depends on what happens. Um, so we'll be doing our responsive pleading uh, later this week. It's, it's due uh, later this week. Uh, and then it somewhat depends on who the judge is. Uh, it did get assigned to Judge Persick who has now withdrawn uh, from the matter, uh, recused herself from the matter. Uh, it was then uh, sent over to Judge Borowski, and today uh, the plaintiff filed a motion uh, uh, substituting Judge Borowski. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, okay. All right. So do, uh, we need a motion to hold, I believe. I'll move. Second. 
All right. Any other questions? I would, uh, uh, for members of the committee, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the complaint, it's quite interesting. So I would recommend it to you. Uh, I assume you've all read it, but I just thought I'd toss that in. Um, if uh, there is nothing further, uh, all in favor of the motion, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. The matter is held. <laughs> Let's move on then to 3.5, which is submitting for information the signed tentative uh, collective bargaining agreement between the city and firefighters local 483. Um, it's, uh, and Chuck, it says the contract will be submitted uh, for approval by the common council. Will it come back here to us first? It, it likely would, yes. Um, so what you're, the, the purpose of this is so that you're aware of what's in this so that if you choose then to kind of quickly deal with it once you have the final contract, uh, you can. So the, the, the tentative agreement has all of uh, the changes that will be made to, to the contract, but it's technically the contract itself that will need to be signed by the mayor and, and attested by the clerk that is the official document. So it's here for your discussion, and then you can choose whether you want to bring it to committee or just suspend the rules and pass uh, when the actual contract comes. Um, so I was, uh, I think I followed most of it, but I really got lost in the weeds in terms of the changes to overtime. Uh, and, uh, Vicki or, or Chuck, can you just kind of um, just tell us what it used to be and what it is now? I, I, it was, there were terms I didn't understand and so, a wide variety of things. So yeah, Mary Lynn, so. Um, I have, uh, the fire chief is also here to clarify any, any points. The contract itself is, the TA looks lengthy, but most of that was because of language cleanup. Uh, we wanted to just make sure that it was clear. Uh, there was significant changes to the overtime procedure to just make it clarify more to follow current procedures, and Eric can speak to that. The other significant points are that it is a three-year contract, that the increases are two and a half, two and two and a half over the next three years. It did uh, implement the lieutenant acting up, which was city point number 25, and there was an increase in the good attendance from $65 to 90. So um, Eric has the microphone to speak to the overtime procedure. Yes, thank you. So it really was just uh, to follow the current practices of, of how we operate today. Uh, when the contract was uh, first uh, agreed upon, um, and this has been a couple of contracts, uh, it just was never cleaned up. And uh, it's just combining uh, lists that we hire our overtime uh, when we need that uh, position filled. We have a certain uh, structure like the FEOs or an officer or a firefighter paramedic. Uh, and we also had a separate firefighter one on their own. So we kind of combined it to, to make it more convenient in how we do our uh, current hiring procedures right now when we call back for overtime. So truly it was, there's like six or seven different sections that, that deal with overtime and it was to clean up that language to match our current practices. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, how much is, this is, related but not exactly the same. How much money do we typically, or how many hours of overtime are we typically looking at in the fire department? So typically I, I budget anywhere between 55,000 and 70,000 uh, for overtime. Uh, because of COVID, it was really, really, really uh, a unique year, obviously, last year. So we were a little over budget on that as well uh, because of COVID. Uh, but typically, uh, we can't hopefully anticipate uh, that we don't have any injuries, but uh, we have to maintain our shift level. So when there's an injury, it's, uh, it averages about $1,000 for a 24-hour, give or take, depending on seniority, depending on if it was an officer rank or, or what rank. It might be about $1,000 a day for overtime. Uh, to fill a 24-hour position. So it does add up when you're short uh, individuals uh, due to injuries or long-term illnesses. Uh, and obviously with COVID, it, it did have an impact on our department. Um, are there other questions for the chief or Vicki? 
I have one. Or do um, you have one? Go ahead, Marcus. Marcus, you were, I think we're first. I uh, appreciate that. On city point five, under staffing shortage, I don't understand what would be the fourth paragraph. Uh, to me, it sounds like when we hire someone new and move them into a job, they have to be paid the overtime equal to the highest paid person for getting overtime. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and I'd love for that to be explained like I'm an idiot. No, 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 you're not an idiot. Good question. Uh, <laughs> the uh, no, It's not the pay. It is the hours. So when uh, you start the year off and, and as the uh, individuals work overtime, those hours that we keep on the list are, are continuing to tally and add up. So really, that's all it means. It has, it's not the pay. The pay is set uh, based on their, uh, you know, time on and per the contract language, the, the pay is already set. So... Uh, Marcus, if you work uh, five shifts of overtime, those 24 hours, you know, those add up. So the next time we need a overtime, you go by the lowest hours on that list. And that's why you keep accumulating those hours. So so Marcus doesn't keep getting called. We, we are fair and it goes through each position. So they have an opportunity to work overtime. So that's, that's how it is. It's not, so if I was a brand new uh, firefighter getting hired, and the lowest, or the highest, excuse me, the highest overtime hours were uh, 1,000. Well, I automatically get that 1,000 hours, so I don't always get the phone calls because I'm the lowest. I don't always get the phone calls, so now I'm getting all the overtime, and, and, and that's how it's to equal out. Thank you very much. That makes a lot more sense. So it's, it's just like a running tally, and they get the highest number so that they're not called first. They're called an equal rotation. Correct. Thank you very much. Good question. I think Jim is next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Eric, this is your first look at this uh, contract, you know, after being here uh, almost a year. Uh, what were management's goals going into this negotiation of this new contract? And do you think you were successful from a management standpoint? And then after you're done with that, I have a, another specific question. So Alderborn, yeah, uh, quite honestly, we were uh, satisfied with the contract agreement. Uh, we, we were going into the, with my first year and first uh, negotiation to really just clean up some of the language, which is primarily most of the changes. Uh, you know, in, in the future, we may work on other specific items. There were a couple that we didn't, uh, we didn't get just because of the time frame and, and we didn't want to delay too much and, and, and cause us to go further. Uh, but those are things, Administrator Wolf and uh, Director Schneider and I, and working together, we'll, we'll address in the future, um, hopefully. Uh, but we were very pleased, I think, I don't want to speak for, for Director Schneider, however, we were very pleased that we were able to come to an agreement and not cause a huge delay with this contract. And, and, and the union board was uh, open to listening and at least discussing them, so we were happy with that. Okay, and then my, my specific question on the contract, I did read the entire contract yesterday, proposed contract, and the issue there with residency uh, for if, for example, if somebody was hired and they lived outside of the uh, outside of the allotted mileage, and they're uh, uh, allowed a certain amount of time to move in, move into the allotted mileage from from the city, uh, it also said that at your discretion or at the uh, HR director director's discretion, that that could be extended, but it didn't have specific language on whether it could be extended once. Or could this be an ongoing thing that drags out for a couple of years? Is it understood that it would be a one-time extension, or does it, do we need more specific language in there? So, so no, you, you don't want more specific language. This is a case-by-case, case which allows uh, myself and, and Director Schneider to communicate and, and evaluate each uh individual that is requesting, not, not that we have a lot of individuals requesting an extension. So for example, that really addresses uh, if a new, new individual was hired 
and they lived outside the radius and they understand they have to move into that radius, but uh, they, they might not be able to just to sell the house or maybe they have uh, immediate family needs that might prolong that a couple months or, you know, it's not to extend it permanently, it's just to, to allow them to get that opportunity to make the ends meet, if you will, to, to sell that house or to address the family concerns. So I don't know if Director Schneider wants to add anything on that. All I can say, uh, Alder Boren, is that we have not had that experience since I've been uh, part of the city in this community. Um, and we would address it on a case-by-case -case basis, as Fire Chief has said. It has not been uh, a problem area that I believe or has been in the past. Bert, you had a question? Nope, I'm good. Chair? Okay. Chair? Um, and I would note, and I, I would assume Marcus could confirm this, if we look at our um, uh, planning and development annual report about the very limited number of single family homes that are constructed in a typical year, and the difficulty of finding uh, not only affordable housing, but really any housing is really quite, uh, quite striking. So, um, Todd, did I step over you? Yes, that's okay. I just uh, just wanted to make a couple of quick uh, comments, if it, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to compliment all parties, um, obviously the union side, and then also uh, Eric and and Vicky on the negotiations that uh, that had transpired. As we know, Eric is newer to the city of Sheboygan, and Vicky is newer to the um, as the human resource director for Sheboygan. Um, so entering into the union contract negotiations, um, I think that all parties did a really good job. Uh, they did a great job cleaning up the contract with, uh, with the, the fire department and their team. Uh, that'll help us moving forward. Uh, we also, you know, we had a little bit of a different strategy moving into this contract. So uh, the, the union side of the fire department had to kind of get used to our side and we had to get used to their side. So I just wanted to say compliments to everybody that was in, in the negotiations because in the years that I've dealt with union contracts, it can get a little tight at times, especially when you're learning about each, each other. But uh, the end result I think was a very positive and it, it transpired into a three-year agreement. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. All right. Any other questions regarding the substance of the contract? Um, so Chuck, it looks uh, to me like, uh, and I don't know, uh, and Vicki may have this answer or, or uh, Eric, but um, what is the timeline? Um, I know that uh, we have at least one alder and probably more who are concerned about suspension of rules on a, on a regular basis. Um, is there a time time crunch here where um, it, it's not notice for act? Is it notice for action? The effective date. So, so what you've got in front of you, yeah. So the knowing those concerns, it's submitting for information. So you, so the RO here is just you you simply accept and and file. Um, that said. Part of the purpose for bringing the TA here is so that you have this discussion that you've had today, um, which would otherwise, if we didn't send the TA to you, uh, you would normally have uh, by sending the contract itself uh, to uh, committee. So it, it's designed to sort of uh, be the equivalent of sending the contract to committee. That doesn't mean you you know, when it comes before you, I think uh, a lot of the timing, and Vicki, I think, may be able to answer you a little bit on what's happening with the timing, uh, but it's all, we, we like acting on it fairly quickly once we get it from the union so that they're not waiting around uh, for it, uh, which is why we did it this way, why we got this information to you now uh, through the CA. But you always have the opportunity to send it to the committee, even if it comes to the council with a recommendation to suspend the rules. Uh, you never have to suspend the rules. <laughs> so the, con the contract, um, Mayor Alder Donahue, the contract is ready to, to go as far as it, 
we were prepared as if this TA was going to go forward, so the language is there. Um, and I believe the union has already done their portion uh, of, of their side of the contract. So we are ready to go and, and send this into the council as a full contract, however you would like that to be. I mean, I know, I know it's not specifically noticed this way, Chuck, but couldn't we just have a motion to approve the agreement as, as presented? Uh, because it's not noticed that way and it's only the RO, I think what you can do is, uh, you, you can only act on the RO, uh, but what you could do is on the RO indicate something along the lines of we accept and file the RO and indicate that the terms in, of the TA uh, are uh, approved by the committee. And then you'll have that language uh, in the minutes then when uh, on next Monday uh, when the contract actually comes up and if there's any questions about why is the uh, matter being uh, set for a suspension of the rule. So do I have a motion to that effect? Madam Chair, so moved uh, and I'd like to add to that that uh, if any firefighter needs help finding a house, I can get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Shameful. Shameful, I tell you. Opportunistic. <laughs> Uh, is there a second? Second, Warren. Bert, did you have a question or comment? I thought I saw your hand. I'm, so this will go from this committee and barring any substantive changes, this will go to full council and it will go and ask for suspension of the rules to adopt the contract that the entire council We'll see. Right. So the recommendation to accept and file the RO will be on the council agenda, as will adoption of the contract, likely with the request for suspension. Mm -hmm. And we do not anticipate any changes between this RO and the contract. No. We do not anticipate any. And that will be, go ahead. I'm sorry. That will be so noted when we get to council. I can certainly note it for you. <laughs> Thank you. And just so you all know, um, at least from what I'm reading, what we have in front of us is a summary. It is not the agreement. Right. So, um, all right. I, would, I just wanted to make one comment, Madam Chair. You know, sometimes uh, when we get these contracts, it's good to kind of get a side-by-side -side or the old contract with stuff lined out so we know what's being lined out. What's being added? I mean, I read this whole thing yesterday, but I didn't have anything really to compare it to. So that's helpful. We've done that in, in the past with some contracts. And maybe the line by line is a little extreme because as you remember, these contracts do go on for some number of pages, but maybe a summary of the changes um, year over year or contract over contract would be helpful. So the, uh, what I read yesterday, yeah, what I read yesterday was plenty long already. But again, uh, it's nice to have something to compare it to. Uh, you know, they're saying they're deleting certain areas. Well, what are they deleting? I mean, I, I had no idea. Yeah, and and Jim, all I can say to that is I certainly hear what you're saying. On the other hand, it is not from my perspective. It is not our job to go line by line through these contracts and interfere with the contractual relationship. Um, that's why the line by line comparison is, uh, to my mind, uh, an overreach. On the other hand, I do take your point well that we need to know what the differences are. Yep. And so I think the TA gave us kind of a, um, a, a summary of that. Uh, but uh, Vicki, what I would suggest for the council meeting is that you have maybe in advance um, a, a summary of the changes uh, uh, from contract to contract. Can you do that? Or Eric? Sure, we can do that. Okay. I would appreciate that also, thank you. Okay. Contracts go on for 75 yeah. pages. No. Well, that's, that's, why they, that's why I'm getting, that's why I got the raise last year to go over these things, so I do. No, I understand that. And it's always a fine balance between um, setting policy and, well, so uh, there you go. 
All right, so we have a motion before us to um, file the uh, the temporary agreement, not the temporary agreement, what is it? The, the tentative, tentative agreement. agreement. Thank you. Um, and to uh, submit the final contract for approval to the Common Council. Is there such a motion? I think we already had them. Did we do that? I'm sorry, I always lose track. Um, if there aren't any other comments or questions, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. And just to note for the record, Jim, <laughs> only some people got a raise. <laughs> some of us did not. <laughs> so, in fact, I think we ought to unionize. You know, I would, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to get to the bargaining table about this, Chuck. It's silly rules. Jeez, Lee Peter. Okay, very good. Um, on that happy note, let's go to um, 3.6, which is a stipulation uh, to dismiss uh, in the matter of Plessig uh, versus, and on and on versus the um, city uh, uh, police department, Chuck. Can and this can also be taken, yeah, this can be taken with 3.10, which is the RC submitting the complaint and summons uh, in that matter. And what we're uh, looking for you to do, there, both of these are just uh, ROs, uh, it would be to accept and uh, file both of them. Uh, just to, you may recall that this uh, arose out of a situation where a number of years ago, uh, there was, I think, what can be fairly described as a suicide by cop situation uh, that occurred at a tavern uh, on the south side. Uh, and uh, the uh, plaintiffs in this case sued the city, uh, claiming some damages out of how the situation went down. Uh, the matter has now been completely dismissed uh, after years of litigation uh, in federal court. Uh, the plaintiff's attorney recognized that they had no case uh, and uh, simply moved to dismiss the case and, and the court has accepted that. It, it, you may be interested in knowing that while this is a, a good result, uh, the city did expend $101,702.45 in legal fees through November 30th. Uh, we expect there will be one more bill uh, coming through. Um, unfortunately, there's not a way to, to recover that, uh, but uh, it is, th th that's kind of what happened. The, 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 there, was a, uh, there was a retirement of the original uh, plaintiff's lawyer who, who uh, filed the case, and uh, I think it, it's fair to say that perhaps the, uh, the new lawyer who took on the case uh, took a little more clear-headed look at the case and moved to dismiss. All right, Marcus. Thank you. Um, Chuck, if you wouldn't mind um, kind of putting that number that was spent in comparison to what they were trying to get from us so we can at least know that we didn't walk out the door, you know, like we, we spent money to protect ourselves. How much did we potentially save? Yeah, um, you know, honestly, the, the, max, the maximum I think we would have been um, yeah, I can't. I can't remember what it is in federal court, but um, but there was there is potential of triple damages beyond that. I don't remember what it was that they were asking for. It was significant dollars, but reali realistically, you know, the fact that we're paying zero on that is a good thing because you know even if if, if this were the kind of case where it went to court and we lost, not only would would you have uh, the the attorney's fees that we paid, but you would all, we would also be paying. Um, you know, the, the, whatever the amount the, of the judgment, uh, which could include attorney's fees for the other side as well. So, um, you know, we say, it, it's hard to say we saved ourselves a lot of money when we knew all along that this was a case that, you know, we were going to win, but yeah, still have to go through the motions to do it. All right. So we are looking for a motion to file. Um, and this is with regard to 3.6 and 
Is that the way you wanted to handle it? Uh, Chuck, yes. or did I miss that? That All is right. correct. All right, so a motion to file on 3.6 and 3.10. A move. Is there a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. All right. Uh, 3.8 is the resolution um, repealing uh, resolution 196-1920 regarding an early retirement incentive program offered to qualifying city appoint uh, employees, rather. And that also loops in, I believe, with uh, 4.5. So, um, Vicki, do you want to kind of tell us what's up? Sure. So, uh, one of my 2021 goals is to review policies and procedures for the, the Human Resources uh, Department, and I came across a uh, policy which is numbered the HR 600 uh, and it's the retirement severance policy. When I looked back also at the resolution that accompanied this, the resolution had uh, given an end date of June 30th of 2020. And so that basically said that this policy was no longer um, valid or effective. And so when I talked to Attorney Adams, and I also talked with uh, Administrator Wolf about what the proper procedure would be to have this, uh, this policy be, be removed, uh, the decision was that it should come back to uh, council to be repealed, as an, just to make it formal. Okay, and then Vicki, is, is 4.5 then the substitution for the, the, the new policy or? Four point five. Four point five is the is the attachment of the example of the policy that is okay. being repealed. All right. Okay. So what you have is you had the the IFC and then you had an example of the policy and four point five is the attachment right. of that. Very good. Bert. Nope. I had the same issue. I wasn't sure how that worked. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had a question, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, Vicki, on the uh, the severance policy, I see the, the document is a severance policy for human resources and I believe finance. Uh, is there going to be a different severance policy worked out for all the various departments or how is that going to work? So what we're working on right now, Alder Boren, is a re uh, revision and update of our handbook. Uh, complete rewrite of our city handbook and that will also accompany city policies as far as looking at all kinds and all types of employee benefits which would include uh, any separation or severance agreements. Thank you. All right, so um, what we are uh, looking for with 3.8 is a motion to repeal the current policy. Do I have such a motion? So move, Boren. Second. All right. Um, Chuck, it seems to me nothing has to happen with 4.5. I mean, that's just almost a supporting document. Um, well, I, I assumed that you were gonna discuss the, what was in 4.5. I, I, would, I would have assumed that it look, it, it, it's not the actual policy. It's a, it's a different policy. So, I, but I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what Vicki has in mind for that. Um, but, okay. the, but that's not a document. It's just a item for discussion. So there's that you won't have anything to file there. The, the okay. All if, right. If I can say the the document should have all been placed under this point on the agenda. Okay. Well, that's no big deal. So I think that is the that is the policy we're repealing. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any any opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay. 
So I know, um, Chuck, oh, never mind. Uh, let's go to 3.9, which is authorizing the purchase of a new Pierce manufacturing rescue engine and other necessary equipment. <coughs> So, Chief, are you going to take that one? Yeah, Madam Chair. Thank you, and uh, committee members. So, um, we placed in the 2021 CIP a replacement for our Quint Ladder 5, which is uh, a 1998 aerial, 100 foot aerial truck. Um, and just to give you a background, um, Typically in the fire service, you have a vehicle in the front line status for about 10 to 15 years. And then uh, depending on wear and tear, some are usually 10, uh, and then another five years in reserve status uh, before they need to be replaced. So this, uh, this ladder truck is over 22 years old. Um, and so uh, currently it didn't pass its aerial uh, inspection so in order to uh, fix that, we felt that obviously the wear and tear on it already, the age of the unit, it just wouldn't be cost effective to try to repair the aerial, uh, the structural damage on the superstructure. Um, it would far exceed the truck's cost, or excuse me, the uh, truck's value. So we put it into a reserve engine status. We were unable to use the aerial device. So a few months after putting it into reserve engine status, uh, it lost its hydraulic capabilities. So it was leaking hydraulic fluid. We couldn't even use it at all. So unfortunately, um, we, we couldn't use it as a reserve engine either, which we were trying to sell it, if it were to sell as an engine uh, for approximately $20,000. But unfortunately, I don't believe we'll be able to get that due to the amount of damage and a mechanical failure. So we're requesting a uh, replacement engine instead of an aerial truck, which would save uh, the city quite a bit of money. Uh, at this time, we just have uh, the 100 foot aerial platform that we purchased a couple years ago. So um, we felt in order to replace and save the city money, we would get an engine instead. And that's what we're asking for approval for. Uh, it's about $685,105. Uh, that if we purchase it ahead of time at, all at once now, we would be saving over $25,000 uh, with Pierce Manufacturing. If we were not to purchase it now, obviously that money would go up and we would also annually, they, they increase their, um, the, their cost of their equipment by 3%, so that would add another 3% and we would be over the 715000 that we were budgeted for in the CIP. Uh, questions for the chief? All right, then we are looking for a uh, motion to approve the resolution. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. Okie dokie. Um, let us go on then to, uh, and I see Chuck here, we had a couple of Walmart, um, uh, Walmart, and these were holdovers from last year, right? Or the last council year? Right, so 3.11, 12, and 14 can all be taken together. Uh, and they are all on just simply to be filed. These are just sort of left over. Uh, they, they had been brought over and we didn't take care of it when we settled the case. So uh, these cases have all been settled uh, and the uh, uh, matter may be filed. There is still one open with Walmart uh, that was recently uh, filed, but these three are completed and paid. Questions for Chuck? I wonder Walmart consulting is cheap, huh? Um, so these so are, are, excuse me, Madam Chair, these then, uh, as it says on the notation here, all of these are going to the Finance and Personnel Committee of 2021, Chuck? They, they, they did. You are the Finance and Personnel Committee of 2021. There, there was probably a lot of information on this agenda that didn't need to be on there that might confuse right. you. But in, in essence, th this was sent to you 
at the end of the last finance and personnel committee year. Oh my God. In front of you now, and now you're filing it so it goes away for good. All right. So we're kind of cleaning the house before the new year starts. So I'm right. looking for a motion to file for uh, 3.11, 3.12, and 3.14. So moved. Second. <laughs> all right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Share votes aye. All right, and then um, 3.13 is a summons and complaint, uh, accurate repair versus the city. Um, is this uh, essentially the same, Chuck? Yes, this is also a case that has now uh, been settled and uh, we've uh, uh, paid out the, the judgment in this case and uh, uh, we are just looking for filing. Um, I, I think probably this was presented to you before, but if you have questions about it, I can. Do I have a motion to file? Move to file. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Okie dokie, let's go to our items for discussion only. Um, we have uh, the city clerk's <laughs> annual report. And Meredith, are you in the chair? Or who's going I'm right to here. This? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Yep. All, All right. right. All right, thank you. I won't take up much of your time. I attached the annual report in for docs. And it's just really an overview of our office. Um, we did the last five years for some comparison of numbers. And I just, I guess I just wanted to say a few things and then open it up for questions. Um, 2020 was a very challenging year as it was for many offices, but ours in particular with the elections. And I think the report was hard to convey um, all the hard work and dedication that went in from the team members in our office um, to the city support, to the community support that we had, and I just wanted to acknowledge that here today. Um, the, also, the other thing that I just wanted to point out, some of our numbers, um, if you look at our numbers for especially the licensing, um, there's only a few that really took um, a hit this last year, and that was in our temporary class Bs, which are linked to events, um, and our tenders and our taxi drivers. Um, that being said, I think the budget was pretty consistent um, with our help from the WEC and the CARES Act. The budget kind of worked itself out with our numbers, so that was pretty impressive with the high numbers that we had for elections and the money that went out for absentees and things like that. So, any questions for me? Chair? Yes. If I may make a, make a few comments. Thank you. I, I also want to just kind of um, compliment everybody in the, in uh, Meredith's department and Meredith herself. They, they've done a fantastic job, um, especially working with the volunteers, the closures of locations, the, the literally the, the scramble to find uh, volunteers and locations to actually have voting and then the absenteeism voting. Uh, capabilities uh, during a pandemic. I think they did a, a fantastic job and I, I can't compliment them enough on the long hours, hard work, and uh, the abilities that they, they give the, uh, the constituents during, um, during the voting time. So thank you. Um, oh, go ahead, Bert. Uh, I would just like to thank Meredith for the five-year trend line. Um, just having one number freestanding doesn't mean a whole lot, but when you put it in a trend, it means something. So thank you very much for doing that. That was gonna be my comment as well. Um, the, your um, charts and graphs regarding um, methods of voting and such were uh, extremely interesting. Meredith, um, I know that the February primary is always a very low turnout, but are you seeing a continuation of absentee balloting requests or is it kind of reverting 
uh, to uh, the way it used to be? Well, um, a little bit of a mix, I think. Right now, we have almost 3,000 ballots that have went out, which is probably triple a normal February that we would have sent out already, so they are sent out. Um, that being said, we have about 1,000 back, so it's all gonna depend in the next week on how many we have returned, I guess would be the question. Okay, very good. If I could just echo, um, I mean, <laughs> your staff was, you and your staff were just absolutely superlative. Um, I mean, what a year. Ay, 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 ay. And um, you did it with such grace and kindness um, and uh, understanding with the public. Um, uh, the compliments that I received on people's treatment from the clerk's office was, was great. The um, absentee ballot box was wonderful. I mean, just up and down the line. So again, thank you so very much. Any other comments or questions for Meredith? Just a quick one for Meredith. Uh, Meredith, my wife and I were in the vote last week at the clerk's office. How is the in-person going so far for the spring primary? How, about how many have been in? Not very many. <laughs> I had 10, 15 a day, but that's about it for the in-person. Okay. More the absentee mailing. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Grace Meredith? under pressure. She's grace under pressure is how I would say her department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's move on to city development. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Chad Pelishek. So I just wanted to review our uh, annual report and I will say that the Department of City Development uh, is made up of two divisions, the Planning and Development Division, which reports to the Finance Committee, and the Building Inspection Div Division that reports to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. So I, my intent today is just to go through the Planning, uh, planning and Development section, but I'm happy to answer uh, questions for those of you that are not on uh, LHPS, because that'll be presented on Wednesday. So in our report, um, it outlines what we've had and uh, accomplished in the 2020 timeframe. And I think the um, moral of the report is we changed our processes to allocate COVID resources through the CARES Act, primarily the CDBG program. So we implemented the Small Business Emergency Assistance Program. Uh, to date, that has spent about 250000 of the $420,000. And um, I know there's comments in the public about uh, that program and why it's not completely exhausted at, yet at this point. And I think some of it has to do with the lack of communication and understanding of how to spend the dollars that we receive from HUD. Um, we received these funds back in May of 2020, and it was almost the end of August before we got directions from HUD on how to successfully uh, use these funds. So that uh, provided some challenges. We recently did another mailing of, 100, of 1,500 postcards, and we're working on uh, roughly 14 to 15 applications. So I, I think we're, we're still in that. We have six years to spend these funds. Um, we also allocated funds to a number of public service agencies um, early on in the pandemic, including the uh, Habitat for Humanity, Meals on Wheels, and the Sheboygan County Food Bank, and then Family Service Association uh, as it related to the issues that they've uh, felt with vulnerable residents throughout the uh, early stages of the pandemic. Um, there's a number of sections on, in this report on economic development. Um, I think two big accomplishments is in 2020 is the completion of the city's uh, first subdivision in a long time. So um, the Stonebrook Crossing subdivision that you are all aware of uh, with the Warner Homes Group. And then we started the affordable housing market study um, and we'll be providing uh, updates and responses uh, to that coming up here in the next month, month and a half. So. That is wrapping up and um, there'll be information coming forward soon. Um, it also talks about the continued focus on housing and the different developments and the value of those projects. Uh, looks at the investments in the opportunity zone, 
um, which was another funding mechanism as part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Um, and then uh, the other piece of this is the uh, TIF districts. So you guys were all part of the implementation of TID 20 um, for the Oscar development, uh, the termination of TID 11, and then the finalizing of the South Point Enterprise Campus in TID 18 uh, for the new business park. There's, it talks about commercial developments, and then uh, we also in 2020 rolled out two new programs, a facade and landscaping program to target uh, dollars to corridors, specific corridors within the city that are high traffic areas or revitalization areas, as well as an upper floor residential rehab program to um, assist owners in commercial mixed use properties to redo their upstairs residential lots, uh, res residential units into affordable housing. Um, under the innovation district uh, update, we partnered with the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation Foundation on a grant to fund the innovation uh, building that's still ongoing in the Indiana Avenue corridor. There's been a number of other uh, projects that the EDC has spearheaded um, and then we've made did, did some major updates to the infrastructure around Badger State Lofts as well as the uh, near completing uh, Badger State Tannery um, for the 118 affordable housing units. Um, under the planning and development and uh, the CDBG program and in the end of December, the RDA awarded a $200,000 note to Johnsonville um, to pr purchase the former Wigwam property and to convert that into a new production facility for their uh, wonderful products. And then um, last but not least, we continue to focus on neighborhood revitalization. And although we were in a pandemic, we still uh, leverage our neighborhood associations through different means to get them to continue to meet and deal with challenges within their respective neighborhoods. Um, so that was a success and continues to be a success. The last part I just wanna review is there's a number of interagency cooperation, um, everything from working with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the Census, the Art Center, Green Tier Legacy Communities, the Nonprofit Network. Um, so we continue to work with these groups and. Uh, share information and receive information from them uh, as we do our different planning pieces. So that's it for the uh, planning and development. The building inspection uh, section of the report gets in specifics about the permitting and, and where we ended the year in comparison to the previous years and then has some residential housing trends listed. So I'd be happy to answer any questions the committee might have. Questions for Chad? I had one, Madam Chair. Uh, Chad, uh, regarding uh, our South Point development over here, are we uh, happy as we go forward with the company that we hired to market it, market uh, South Point, and then what kind of contact do you generally have with them on a weekly, monthly, or do they call you when they might have a prospect? How is that going? Um, I, I would say if we were to do this again, we probably wouldn't hire outside uh, help, we would probably continue to market it ourselves. I think we've had more luck with leads that we've received internally than having an outside broker. Um, so we've looked at what it would take to get out of that contract for the outside broker. And unfortunately, we're kind of tied in for a few years with it. Um, but we still, we they, they're, they're in Milwaukee and we thought that there was going to be a little bit more um, help by being in the Milwaukee market to make referrals up here, but it's not the case. Um, so I, I think we're, we're better off doing it ourselves and we will continue to do it ourselves on our end and, and, um, you know, and, and work through the different leads that are coming through in the local or the regional area. Chair. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just to, to reiterate what, uh, Mr. Palachuk is, is um, referencing. When I became city administrator, Chad and I sat down, went through the contract, and we also contacted them and, and had some meetings with them. And they were pretty much put on notice, in my opinion, that they needed to uh, start expanding our opportunities. Unfortunately, they um, 
played the old COVID card and said nobody's buying, nobody's looking. Um, just to, again, reiterate what Chad had mentioned, I would not recommend going with a group in the future. We have more activity um, within our own city development department, and we do have a lot of opportunities, and we're just waiting to see how things uh, transpire moving forward. There's some really good opportunities that hopefully we'll be able to bring to you in the fu near future. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you, Chad. So next up we have WSPS TV, TV and, and also these are uh, fourth quarter metrics for the TV uh, piece and IT. Um, why don't we take those together, Eric? Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I think I saw you there. I am here. So we'll start with uh, WSCS. So the number of programs produced, um, we had uh, 638 in 2020 with a goal of 500. Uh, public service announcements, we produced eight, had a goal of nine. Um, number of televised common council and committee of the whole meetings, um, we successfully televised 33. We had one meeting where we had some sound quality issues. Um, we believe, um, looking back at 2019, where we had nine meetings where we had issues with the move into uh, the new city hall and the new equipment, um, we only see that improving in the future. Uh, additionally, just to, to elaborate on that, um, since COVID, COVID has hit, we have uh, broadcast over 300 meetings in addition to those 34 or 33 uh, common council and committee of the whole meetings. So my hat's off to Scott and his team for stepping up and providing that coverage for us. Um, on uh, demand viewing um, and on demand unique visitors, those two we fell a little bit short, but on the flip side of that, when we look at our YouTube views, in 2019 we had 4,800 YouTube views. In uh, 2020, we had over 20,000. So I think we're seeing uh, the YouTube becoming a, a, a much more popular channel for uh, people to access WSCS. Any questions on the WSCS report? Any questions, Eric? I do have a question, Eric. Uh, uh, after we're done with this COVID thing and we can get back to our regular meeting room 106 downstairs where we have finance and personnel, I believe with the remodeled city hall, we ha do we have the capability if we want to continue uh, broadcasting these meetings that we would be able to do it from, for example, room 106 or the public works meetings if they get back to their conference room up there. Is there that capability? We, we um, definitely have the capability to record those and rebroadcast those. Whether we'll be able to live stream those or not, we, we can investigate that technology. It is available if, if that's something we decide that is, is uh, valuable to us, we, we definitely could live stream those as well. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, Eric, why don't you go on with uh, IT? Okay, for IT, the average close time of critical and high IT tickets uh, ended at 3.6 uh, with a goal of five. Um, I guess additionally, when, when I started here, one of the things we changed is prior to my coming on board here, every, I guess, issue that uh, popped up was uh, required a ticket to be entered. And we definitely uh, relaxed that. We uh, probably see now about 50% of uh, uh, requests coming in just via a phone call. Um, so it's, it's I think, uh, provides a better level of service to uh, our end users. Uh, the percent closed within a time frame. We had a goal of uh, 90 and we fell just a little bit short at 89%. We are maintaining our core servers and network uh, at the current uh, version of firmware and then uh, some of them are one level back. Uh, typically we're not looking to uh, install the firmware versions when they uh, come out immediately. We, we like to have uh, some other people 
uh, test them for us before we uh, implement those. Um, workload, percentage of computers installed with the uh, endpoint protection, the four gate client is 100%. Uh, we continue to maintain that. Um, number of legacy applications retired in, retired in 2020 was two. We have, a, in, in 2021, we have a much more aggressive goal. Um, so we continue to, to aggressively pursue uh, getting off the, the AS400 or the IBMI. Um, and we did have a security audit performed late last year, and we are uh, currently in the process of reviewing that audit and uh, making recommendations and, and, and patching areas where we feel we have some vulnerabilities. Any questions? Uh, Marcus first. Uh, if we could talk a little bit about the average close time of critical high IT help tickets in days. Um, if I, I'm pretty sure you had mentioned that uh, you're now not creating tickets for half of them because you're just taking phone calls. Is that the case or how are you tracking the phone calls that are coming in so that you can accurately report this metric? We, uh, most of the phone calls that we, we aren't, we don't track the phone calls. Most of the phone calls that come in are going to be for password resets or uh, log um, account resets. So typically someone calls us and said, you know, I, I forgot my password, can you change it for me? Or I've tried my password five times and now I'm locked out. Um, phone calls the easiest, simplest way to handle that and we do not track those. You know, they, they typically take us 30 seconds to resolve those issues. And if someone's locked out of their computer, they have to go find a computer or someone that they can get on to enter a ticket so we can respond to it. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind. Thank you, I've got a follow-up question to that and then I, I should be okay. Um, does that, if most of your calls are um, password resets, does that fall to the level of critical slash high help tickets or is that like a low level thing? Well, I, I guess most people would consider that pretty high because if you can't get on your computer to access your email or do your job, you know, that's why typically they, they consider it a high level. One of the other things we're implementing is we are rolling out a, I guess, a self-service password reset process in which a user can set up a, a series of four to six security questions and if they lock themselves out, they can go back in and answer those questions to get themselves unlocked. So we are, we are trying to get away from IT always having to have uh, involvement into that so that our, our users can self-serve those types of requests. Thank you. Chair? Oh, sorry. The legacy, the retiring, the legacy. It, you you anticipated five and you got two, so you had a forty percent grade there. Um, was was that? It, did COVID impact your ability to retire some of those legacy issues because you were busy with other issues? No, I'm, I'm not gonna say uh, COVID had much of an impact on that. That's, that's um, I think if you were to ask around at the city, we've been hearing that we're going to get off the uh, legacy applications of the IBMI for probably over 10 years now. And um, when, when uh, we came in, we, we started to actually start to track some real numbers on the use of that, um, as well as the number of applications we're using um, so we could actually know where we needed to start and what we were still using on that system. So we identified that uh, beginning of, of 2020 um, and then we uh, laid out a plan and, and, and this plan basically is looking at um, spending some monies, if you will, because a lot of the legacy applications we have will need to be replaced with new software. So as we go through this process, you know, we have uh, monies in the 2021, 22, 23, and 24 capital improvement budgets to address purchasing additional software packages to uh, assist us in retiring these legacy applications. Okay. Uh, 
Todd, would you just speak as briefly as you can about your your current plan of action and accomplishments in terms of moving us off of ASA and, and to a more robust use of Munich? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Um, first, I wanted to compliment both the IT department and the WSCS uh, group because they have done a phenomenal job. Um, if you think about where we were a year ago or where we were before we moved into the city hall, um, you know, prior to the remodel, we would not be able to do what we're doing right now if we wouldn't have had uh, the foresight to number one, remodel, number two, to include the upgrades in technology because um, as a past alder, our technology was very, very poor. Um, and I'm sure you guys remember those conversations. Um, in, the, in the time that I've been in this position as city administrator, I've been working with Eric and his team in pushing them in a positive way uh, to, to getting technology implemented in a, in a very quick manner. So they've done a phen phenomenal job, again, kudos to rolling out 2019 in all the office suites, in all of the uh, computer systems. But not only that, we are right in the middle of a Munis upgrade to 2019, which is a huge undertaking um, because it, it affects every department within the city. We're also implementing and, and looking into uh, additional upgrades uh, that you've heard me mention as far as uh, we, we did purchase Neighborly, which will take care of our loans programs um, for our constituents. We're also looking at EAM, which is going to uh, be a huge new opportunity to get a lot of things off the AS400, and we're going to be able to have strategic planning for not just our roads, but equipment and fleets and all of that. So there's, there, there's a a plethora of modules and upgrades that are going to be going in and we're going to start utilizing our Tyler Munis to a much, much higher um, factor than what we have in the past years. Does, I hope that helps you. It's just been my sense that um, the report just seems a, a little misleading because as Todd said, I think that there is a fairly intense um, effort underway, uh, at least in several departments, to uh, to f start fully utilizing units and to look at it in a creative way that helps us uh, perform better and be more chair respond to our constituents. And uh, so I think uh, so. I think that's all good. And uh, I appreciate that, Todd and Eric. Chair, I think the. Else, anyone? I think the biggest cons okay. the biggest point right now is we're looking at fourth quarter, um, we're looking at 2020, and a lot of a lot of the implementation actually started I would say in fourth quarter as far as the the main push for the for the Munis upgrade um, because we're planning on going live the end of February. March at, first, yeah, in March first, but. End of February, March 1st. Yeah, we're going to be going live, and then we'll be upgrading our our modules further from there. But the the big the big thing is that I think you'll hear more about future development and getting off AS 400. The other part of it, just to help the committee understand, we're really digging into the AS 400 to find out: do we really need to migrate it off, or do we just start anew? Um, a, if you think of the AS400 as a filing cabinet, there's a lot of files in there that if you don't go back and look at them over five plus years, do you really need them? Sometimes it's uh, time to move on. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? First. Thank you. Um, I, I would just encourage, even if it's hash marks on tablets that are collated at the end of the week. If the majority of your requests for help come in by phone, you, you probably should capture how many requests you get via phone and how much help you actually do day by day, every day that, that fills up your time. So um, I would encourage you to uh, somebody used the word robust. 
make your report a little bit more robust. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anything else for Eric? Uh, Eric, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, thank you again. I had a situation uh, back a couple of months ago where I was having a great deal of difficulty with my with my home Wi-Fi and attending meetings and and uh, losing signal and that type of thing. And we die, Eric, with Eric's help and uh, Micah Adams from his staff diagnosed the problem that I needed a cable and adapter to plug in directly to my uh, to my modem here at home. And that was right before a two and a half hour uh, uh, plan commission meeting we were going to have on the golf course. And uh, uh, Micah Adams made a, a house call and came over and got me up and running about 10 minutes before that meeting and everything has been excellent since then. And I just want to again thank, publicly thank Eric and Micah Adams for going ab above and beyond the call of duty to get me up and running for that meeting so I could attend the thing without uh, going, you know, going on and off for that entire meeting. And I will say, though, that my wife, Marilyn, had a dozen uh, chocolate chip cookies for Micah on the way out the door, which I believe he shared with the uh, with the department. So but anyway, thank you very much again, Eric, for getting me up and running. And everything has been very smooth since that in attending my various meetings. Thank you, Jim, and yes, the, the cookies were shared by the staff and they were de delicious. <laughs> and Jim got a pay raise. So yeah. that's what, you know, what he used <laughs> Why didn't you get a raise, Mary Lynn? Oh. It, it only applied to half the, half the alders. Oh. Yeah, only people who were reelected last well, I, year. I, I, I'm, I'm taking Maryland to top-notch restaurants now instead of McDonald's since, we got, since I got that raise. When we can go out during this pandemic. Well, there you go. You're a gym. Okay, let's go to, the thing I like about Marcus is he laughs at all my jokes. So bless your heart. So do I. Um, so 4.5, I think we took care of, right? I think we're all squared away on that. And our next meeting is February 22nd. Hopefully our agenda won't be quite so full, but we got a lot done today. If there's nothing else for the good of the order, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all for your help. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Have a good night.